Major funding for these broadcasts has been provided by grants from New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Eastern Consolidated, MNT Bank, Sterling National Bank, Meridian Capital Group, the Wickoff Organization, Customers Bank, Aerial Property Advisors, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chase Mortgage Lending, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns. Additional funding has been provided by AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Amtrust Title Insurance Company, AVR Realty Company, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Laumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Citizens Bank, Cohen Equities, Colliers International, NYC, Collins Building Services, Connect One Bank, CPEX Real Estate Services, Dime Community Bank, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Handro Properties, Handler Real Estate Organization, HAP Investments, Hodges Ward Elliott Inc., Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Madison Realty Capital, Matone Group, Mercantile Bank, New Banks, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., People's United Bank, Polsonelli, Rosewood Realty Services, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, The Knackle Group at Cushman and Wakefield, Maringoff Family Foundation, The Moynian Group, and these friends. Lithuania via Minsk on a boat? They come over, stone people, stone masons, bricklayers. Nah, we're not going to be bricklayers anymore. We're going to go out to Queens. We're going to go out to Riverdale. We're going to build. We're going to build homes. We're going to build hotels. We're going to build in Florida. We're going to get involved. And you know what? We're going to start building buildings. Not buildings. We're going to build edifices that people will know, the Fisher Brothers. And who's here today? The third generation of the Fisher Brothers. Ken Fisher, thanks for being here. Thank you, Michael. So tell me about uh, Grandpa Carl, which we're not sure if it was a C or a, a K, but we know that you were named after him. I was, and it is with a K, my name, Kalman. Carl was, uh, was, a very, uh, was a very strong man, a very quiet man. I never met my great how, how old was he when he came over? He's probably in his, his late 20s. Uh, he was a stonemason by trade. Uh, and, you know, like everyone else, came here to, uh, to get a better life. And uh, he came with his wife and uh, a few children that they had over in Lithuania. Martin? Martin was one of them. Martin was the, what we consider to be the founding partner, along with my grandfather, Larry, and my uncle, Zach. Now... Martin, who's really the, the next patriarch of the family from your grandfather, they get into the mason business. Mm -hmm. So they're working as laborers, doing construction and all this. How do they get to the next stage that they start building uh, residential homes? The brothers were very strategic thinkers. Uh, and so it was the logical progression. They were bricklayers and they started to, to call in trades and, you know, as they needed them. Uh, the plumbers, the electricians, and so forth, because all the buildings were, were brick and mortar. And then it was, uh, I think it was Zachary who got a loan, and, uh, and the brothers bought their first property and developed it themselves. So they became owner-builders uh, around the, the 30s. Even though they went into business in their 20s, probably, mm -hmm. The, the real creation of the Fisher Brothers entity was 1938. As we know it today, yes. Um, we, we call it, you know, back then when, when, when uh, Carl came over and started to, you know, apply his trade here 
uh, was the birth of, of Fisher Brothers, but really the, co the company that we know today was founded uh, around the 30s. The Fisher Brothers are building, they're building in Forest Hills. They, they also started building, they, bought, they built the Imperial House of Manhattan, mm -hmm. one of the largest. They built Park Five. Mm -hmm. uh, they built the Sherry Hotel in, in Florida. When, when did the Fisher Brothers, you, you, the three of them, get involved and decide that they're going to build office buildings? Well, the 30s and the 40s, the 40s obviously was the hotels down in Miami Beach. The brothers would go down there and, and again, being the strategic thinkers they were, uh, saw the need and, and, and was and quickly, you know, came in and developed. Uh, so the 30s and the 40s were about becoming Fisher Brothers, becoming a substantial going concern, if you will. But in the 50s, I think they always looked at commercial as their ultimate goal. Right. Now, it was probably around 56. Right. Martin passes on in 1955, I believe. Uh, no, Martin passed away in 1976. 70, 76. Mm -hmm. But during that period of time, the family starts their first building. And I think their first office building was 400 Park Avenue. Yes. Yes. It was on a ground lease uh, from the Benisons. Uh They had assembled a, uh, a, a, a core group of partners and, uh, and built 400 Park Avenue. Uh, and that opened around 1956, 1957. And then after that, they, they got involved uh, later on, with the, one of the buildings was the Bankers Trust building downtown, mm -hmm. which was one of the highest leases ever uh, to the Bankers Trust company. And then, you know, there were the other buildings that, you know, the, the J.P. Morgan, uh, the J.P., uh, the Fabric Company. Burlington. Burlington Fabrics, uh, which is 1345 Avenue, the Americas, which is now the Alliance Bernstein yes. building. But one of the showcases was 299 Park. When did they build 299 Park? 1967. Uh, we had an issue. Uh, I remember sitting in the construction office one day with my father. He got a phone call at the time. He was just been promoted. And a piece. And we had a windstorm, and, and a piece of Q-deck had been lifted up and, and blown blocks away. And so we had to get in, and, and my father took me along. You know, one of the things that I always remember is the smell of concrete, the smell of curing concrete. And every time my kids walk into a building, they smell it, and I see, you don't realize it, but it's in your blood. Mm. It really is. Now the second generation comes in. Mm -hmm. they, they joined the company probably in the, in the 50s, early 60s? Yeah. Lester, uh, Martin's son, Martin's oldest son, joined the business. He was an engineer uh, by trade. Uh, and uh, and began uh, supervising uh, all of the construction. Uh, my father would, uh, was brought in. Uh, in Father's Arnold. Arnold, yes. Uh, he was brought in in the 60s. He had spent 13 years as a laborer. So he learned literally from the ground up. He was a Korean War veteran. Uh, and when he got out of the Army, he came in and, uh, and immediately went to work uh, as a laborer. And then there's Anthony or Tony. Then Tony, who became one of my best friends and my mentor, my older brother, if you will, uh, and Richard Fisher. So uh, there was four, I'd, I would say, in the, in the second generation. Right, and during the second generation, they went into the construction business, really, by taking over Plaza Construction. Yes, uh, in the early 80s, the, Tony and Richard came up with the concept that there were ways that we could that we could kind of value create. And so, the, and so Tony and Richard decided to form our, our cleaning company, uh, an interior alteration company, uh, and a security firm. And, and the, the properties had two garages. We took over the ownership of the, or, or the management of the garages as well uh, because we said, you know what? We're managers. We should be able to do this ourselves instead of outsourcing it. You were born when? 19... I was born in 1958. So you were born in 1958. You originally lived up in Riverdale, right? Yes. And you went to public school in Riverdale, and then you, the family moved to Harrison, right? Yes. We moved to Harrison, I would say, around 1970. So talk to me about growing up in Riverdale and Harrison. Very, very different, uh, like night and day. 
Uh, in, in Riverdale, uh, there weren't many places to play ball. Um, we would play in the, in the asphalt schoolyard and so forth, stickball. We played stickball and, and we played football, those things. But it was PS24, didn't have really a, a place to, or any fields as, as we know it. And then all of a sudden, one day, we pack up and we move up to, to Harrison, New York. And, and I, the, the one thing I remember, Michael, about moving there was that it was so quiet. We lived on the Henry Hudson Parkway. So there was a fire station across the street where I always would jump up when I heard it so I could see it because I want to be a fireman. But the, it was noisy, and I had learned to, to sleep, you know, with all that noise. When we moved to Harrison, the one thing I'll never forget is how quiet it was. Now, I remember the air conditioning, which was on automatic, would, would kick in and it would wake me up immediately. So it was difficult, but, it, but ultimately I learned, obviously, to love it because I was a ball player. And all of a sudden, all these ball fields and these open spaces became available to me, and it was, uh, it was like... So, so how does the kid from Harrison decide to go up to Ithaca, New York? <laughs> well, I decided, you know, I wanted to stay close, but I didn't want to be too close. And one of my best friends from high school... Uh, was going to Ithaca, and he said, take a look at it. And when I did, I fell in love with it. It was, it's very cold, but it was, it was a great place to go to school. But your DNA from the relatives said, I got to really leave, and you decided to leave early, and you get, you went to work completely for the business. Yes. You got involved with construction work. I did. I got, I left, and it's one of the regrets of my life. It was in such a rush to get into the business that, that I didn't finish, and it was, it's, it's, a, it's something that I'll never... Yeah, but you got the, your honorary doctorate later on last year, so it didn't matter. Which, which was... Which was wonderful. One great, of the happiest feeling. days of my life. So let's talk about another happiness day, because you're now working in the family business, in, in building and other aspects, and we'll talk about the future today, and one day you go out to California. Tell, <laughs> tell the story about California, oh. because that's how you mm. met Tammy. Yes. Uh... Uh, one of my friends was offered an opportunity to invest in a club and he was going to move out there because that was his business. So he came to me and he said to me, uh, would you like to come with me? And I said, well, I'm not going to move there, but I'll invest with you. And it turned out to be a place called Roxbury, which we all remember Studio 54 from the 70s, but it was the Studio 54 of Beverly Hills. And it was one of those things that was, you know, it was completely it would happen by accident. So the New York City building goes out to L.A.? Yes, which, by the way, kind of mirrored my grandfather, Larry, who spent a little bit of time out there as well. And I'll never forget the talk that we had uh, when I got back one time. But, yes, uh, it turned out to be a phenomenal success. It was the Studio 54 of Beverly Hills. And so you meet uh, a, a many people when you own a club. And uh, so I became really enthralled with the life out there. And uh, there was this girl there that I just fell in love with immediately. And she did not know that I was one of the owners. So she thought that the only people that got the treatment that I did was either a celebrity uh, or an owner or somebody who, as they say, dabbled in the illegals. Uh, I did obviously not. So uh, I had to convince her I was one of the owners. And I finally got her to go on a date with me. Yeah, but it was a short period of time. You got to go on the date, and then you were engaged in what, in six weeks? We were engaged six weeks later, and it was for no other reason because it was costing me a fortune in flowers. I was sending her two dozen roses. And, and subsequently, tell me about your kids. What do you have? Three of the best children. What are they doing? You're, the names of the kids? Crystal, my oldest, uh, is 35. Uh, Brittany, my middle, is 23. And Josh will be 21. And are any of them in the business yet? N Crystal came into the business for a little while. Uh, she ultimately got married and to a great guy. Great, great guy. After 2001, the Fisher family saw a number of uncertain and, and terrible events. What happened? Well, Larry passed away, and in, in my grandfather passed away in February of 2001. We had not really had, you know, we had amazing longevity in my family, as a lot of the Russians do. Uh, so we didn't experience, you know, death in, in the sense that otherwise, you know, 
uh, from natural causes. You know, the older, the older family members would pass away. But in 2003, we had an abnormal year. Uh, my brother's son uh, passed away at the age of 12. Uh, and about four weeks after that, my cousin Tony, who was, I told you, in, in the lead up, uh, was when my mentor. He was seven years older than me, but he was my mentor. He was my teacher, my friend, my, my big brother. He was everything to me. Uh, after Tony passed away, there wasn't a lot of time to mourn. Uh, my wife, Tammy, got sick with lupus uh, and Guillain-Barre, the onset of lupus, and uh, was paralyzed for six months. I was running from meetings to parent-teacher conferences and back to meetings, Michael, because, uh, you know, Tammy, losing Tammy, you know, in, in, in the sense that she couldn't do the things that she wanted to do was enormously difficult for me, obviously, but it was even compounded by the fact that so much of what Tony had done was now my responsibility. So my job description grew, but it right. also grew at home. And then the next event. There was another father, if you will, uh, that I was the son uh, born to that father in, in terms of business, and that was Sam Kleiner. Sam was our in-house counsel for many, many years. Sam would sit on the couch in my office every day for 20 years. He was probably one of the closest people to me in my, that I've ever had. So Sam uh, came down with cancer and, and died um, in November. It was November 17, 2003. I think that's when all of the, the bad events had hit me because not, not one of them was, was a natural event. Not one of them should have happened. Uh, Sam should be alive today. Uh, so I lost another mentor, another best friend, if you will. And then a week after that, we lost my 21-year-old cousin Andrew uh, in a car crash on Thanksgiving morning. And so obviously, the comparisons to the Kennedy family were being made and, and it was, it, it angered me, you know, to hear things like that. We were, we, were, we were going through a very, very difficult period. And then a couple of years later, your other uncle died. Richard, my cousin Richard, cousin passed away in 2006. So, you know, so much of the family that I was born, that I came into this business with were now gone. The only one that was left was my father. And interestingly enough, my father was not supposed to be here. My father had been through several episodes. Uh, he had three heart attacks, uh, two by, the age, by 40, the age of 40. He's had three triple bypasses. He's had multiple angioplasties. And the fact that he's still here is a miracle. But let's, you know, let's talk about miracles in the Fisher family. Today, you're responsible for leasing uh, and, managing. and managing the, the properties. Your cousin, Winston, mm -hmm. is responsible for development and financing mm -hmm. uh, in the Mez. And your other... Stephen's running the, the family office, if right, you will. Right, the family office. But one of the things that the Fisher family is known for is philanthropy. Mm. And you've taken the, basically the lead on that side. Even though everyone else is involved, it's your lead. So let's talk about the Intrepid and then the Fisher houses. I like to think, Michael, that the Intrepid led to the, the rebirth of the West Side uh, waterfront. You remember... Obviously, the West Side back in the 70s, what it looked like, it was everything that was wrong with New York could be encapsulated in that West Side uh, waterfront. You had drugs, prostitution, you had the gangs and everything else. And so uh, a group of, 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 of businessmen, Tex McCrary being one of them, Mike Stern, a, a very famous author, had approached Zach. Um, they had, and with this story, that the USS Intrepid, which was fought in three wars, was the primary space recovery ship for NASA, was going to be decommissioned and chopped up. And I say sold as razor blades. And it was what I call the drop dead era in New York, because if you remember the headline, Ford to City drop dead. Uh, you know, it was our interest rate right. for 22%. And New York was, was cratering. It so, was everything so was Zach bad. Zach gets involved? So they got Zach into it, and uh, Zach uh, essentially made the deal, saved the ship, went to Ed Koch, who was mayor at the time, and 
said to Ed Koch, she said, Mayor, I want to bring the Intrepid to New York, but I want to put it on the east side. And it was Ed Koch that convinced Zach to put it on the west side. The city would build the pier. So it was kind of a public-private partnership from the start, which is the foundation of everything that we do when it comes to, to uh, our philanthropy with the military and, and the things that we're known for. And in 1981, the USS Intrepid was permanently moored on 46th Street, uh, Pier 86 uh, in Manhattan. And it is now the northernmost anchor of the Hudson River Park. And I want to think, and I think a lot of people will agree, that there would be no Hudson River Park today if the Intrepid hadn't gone there yeah, when it did. I think it was written in a couple of the articles that this was Zach's part of his repayment that he wasn't in the military, that he wanted to give back even extra hard for the military because of the Intrepid. Yeah, my father was the only veteran in the family. Zach did try to enlist uh, in World War II. He had suffered a knee injury from a construction accident. So he was classified 4F and couldn't serve. He wanted to join the Marines. So the brothers built coast, coastal fortifications and did whatever they could do uh, to help with the security of the country at home. But Zach never got over the fact that he couldn't serve, and I think that bothered him for a long, long time. And today you serve as the co-chair of the Intrepid. Right? Yes, with Bruce Mosler. Uh, the two of us are co-chairmen of the Intrepid today. Uh, so it's kind of gone... You know, again, it's, 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 it's something that the family feels very strongly about uh, keeping in the family. Let's talk about Fisher House, how that happened and what it is today. After Zach had brought the Intrepid to New York, he was so enamored with what he had done and, and you know, the impact that it was having. And the military, by the way, was, was, was thrilled with it because there had been nothing like this of its kind before. A private effort to bring in... And, 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 you know, an, an older ship that was being decommissioned and saved. This was unheard of at the time. And so he made a phone call to the wife of the, the wife of the chief of naval operations, Pauline Trost. The husband's Carl, uh, General, uh, Admiral Carlisle Trost was the chief of naval operations at the time, very close friends of Zach and Elizabeth. And she told him a story about going to Bethesda Naval Hospital and coming upon a car, it was very obvious that somebody was sleeping in it. So she banged on the window and said, why are you in your car? Why aren't you in a hotel? And he said, I'm in the military. I'm, I'm serving in the military. I can't afford a hotel room because they don't make a lot of money. And my wife is, is hospitalized. Uh, and this is my only option. So she told Zach. Now, Zach says that I'm a builder. I have access to architects. I can build a home. That's what I did. And that was the birth of Fisher House, which was 1991. Uh, the original four were Walter Reed, Bethesda, Joint Base Lewis McCord up in Washington State and Brook Army Medical Center down in San Antonio. So, so you built these homes with four? Four original homes with money from Zach's pocket. These were homes for how many people? Well, in the beginning, there were only five rooms, five or six rooms. It was only about uh, four or 5,000 square feet of house. So by today's standards, these were very small. Let's, let's move on of where Fisher House is today. I took Fisher House over in earnest in 2002. There were about almost 28 houses, I think, or 27 houses at the time. Today, there are 72 Fisher Houses around the world. I built one in Great Britain. I'm the chairman of Fisher House. It's one of my absolute passions. It's, it started with the desire to continue a legacy. And all of a sudden, I wake up one day, and, it's, and it is a passion. And I mean a fierce passion. There hasn't been a Fisher House built in New York, really. No. So with all the work and the family's involvement in, in New York... It's really great that 2017 will see the building of a Fisher House. Where is that going to be? At the Bronx VA, the so Peters this, VA. So this is going to be on land. The deal, I believe you said to me, is th the property is donated from the VA. It's all federal land. Federal land that is given over to the charity to build the house. We, we, we are deeded the land temporarily. We will then build the house. And today, the, 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 the two that we're building in the Bronx will be about 14,000 square feet, 16 rooms, two houses we're building because of the need. So this is for 
veterans' families who are visiting the, the vet when they're at the VA facility? They stay in a Fisher house, very much like the old Ron, or the Ronald McDonald house functions. A family will come in, stay as long as they need to, no charge. And the dedication to the new homes are going to be built when? Well, we're going to break ground on, we haven't announced this yet, so we're going to announce it here. We're going to break ground on May 25th. Uh, and and uh, as I say, there'll be two houses there. Uh, and it's really something that's very, very special to me because I grew up a mile away. Uh, and it was, it, the, the irony of ironies, Michael, is is that the, the one of the houses, one of the hospitals on the list was the, there's three VAs in New York City one in, in Fort Hamilton in Brooklyn. And that was on the list a few years ago. And I thought that that was very kind of apropos because the brothers started in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, right. And, you know, and since Zach's founded Fisher House, that it would be a perfect place to honor Zach's legacy. And uh, as it turned out, that was scrapped. They didn't, they, they took it off the list. And it, so at least we're in the place where they built many of their homes in the Bronx not over, not directly at the VA, but Riverdale is not too far away. Not too far. It's only about a mile, I would say. And, and, the, and the family lived in the Bronx. And we lived in the Bronx, so it's, it's where I grew up. So, it's it in a way, it's it's come. Fisher House has come home, and the impact that it's had is something that you got to pinch yourself because it's really bittersweet. I, I don't, I don't want to. You know, it's it's not something that you walk around and you brag about because this is something we do because these men and women deserve it. But to be in the position we're at today, to be one of three foundations in the defense appropriations bill after they've eliminated earmarks, to be able to say that 30,000 families a year will benefit from this program, that we've saved them in excess of $350 million in travel expenses and lodging expenses, the fact that we were able to give back, I think that honors the brothers' legacy in ways that they never could have imagined. And I think it honors, you know, great-grandpa Carl, you know, Martin and everyone else because they've been giving back ever since they came to America. And the Fishers are truly a dynasty of New York, and I'm happy you were here today. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Michael.